Margaret Solisu Horadin, and I welcome you once again to Senior Care on TV. Today, we're going to be discussing in depth a very important topic called retirement. I have a question for you Is your retirement working for you? If given the opportunity, I know many of you would love to be here to uh, share your experiences or how you've been coping with life after retirement. In view of that, I have with me special, a special guest for today. They're all retired. And they're going to be telling us, sharing their stories since they retire. Please help me to welcome Frank, Andrew, Jan, Marshall, and Michael. Now, how long have you been retired? Well, I'll, I'll answer first. I've been retired now for six years. For six years? Six years. Okay. Very boring. Oh my God, we're going to go into that. We're going to go into that. So let's go. Six years. What about you, Andrew? I've been retired for two years and uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, volunteer work. Okay, very good. So you've been keeping busy? Keeping busy. And uh, Frank, you said, you know, it's been boring, so we'll see. <laughs> what about you, Jan? Um, June will be four years of retirement. Four years of retirement. I love every minute of it. Very good. So we have uh, varieties. Yes. About three and a half years, about like three. Jan, I'm enjoying it. Very good. What about you, Mike? Just a year and a half so far. Just a year and a half so far. So starting with Mike, what uh, what is your background? I mean, what work did you do? I spent 36 years on Wall Street. On Wall Street. Very good. You a stockbroker? Uh, bond trader. Bond trader. What about you? I was um, also in financial services. Okay. Yeah. For how many years did you? About 33. 33 years. Yeah. And what about you, Jan? Uh, special education for 36 years. Oh, God. Good. What about you, Andrew? I was a teacher also, science, for 25 years. 25 years. And Frank? Frank. Two careers. One as a private chauffeur, working for many celebrities in New York, and the other as a actor. And for how long? 50 years. For 50 years. 50 years. So if long, I... Long, long time. Not to, you know, not to go into very private area, but how long... I mean, at what age did you retire? Maybe just... A, you know, you don't have to give me your exact age, but you know, I know you all have, um, you know, an extensive, you know, work life, you know, experience. And um, um, well, at 55, I was eligible to retire, and um, I put in my papers to do that, and then I decided I wasn't ready yet. Okay. And then that course of the year, a lot happened with the family and things, and um, I realized that I couldn't commit to my job as well because I was being pulled in many directions and I put my papers in again and retired at age 56. Okay. Okay, Jan, you did say about, you know, the, the, the you know, you did give us a brief introduction how, what made you retire, but that kind of made me to, a question came to my mind, did you plan your retirement or it was just something that just happened? Oh no, I planned it over the last prior four years. Oh, okay. Planning ahead looking at finances, was I ready, and you have to have like a mindset that you're going to get there. You're going to get there. And okay. be ready for it. Okay, because the way, you know, what you said about um, the, the, you, you retired at the age of 56, yes. and then you were, you know, because you were put in different directions, yes. so that made me to ask the question if it was planned, you know, and or if it's something that just, you know, happened because of the condition at work. Well, that was the final decision on when it was going to happen. Okay. It's like, now is the time. Okay. So now we're going to talk something very general. You know, how do you define retirement? What is retirement to you? Um, anyone can ask the question? Not working in the field that you've been going to the every day and just waking up in the morning and not going there anymore. Not having like a structured, you know. Uh, a totally different structure. So you know, when you were working, you got up in the morning, Monday through Friday usually, went to work, came home at night, did it again the next day. Now, it's, you know, you get up on Monday and your office is not there. It's a different, uh, there's no daily commitment. Okay. And that freedom, I never had because I started working at 19 full time. So it's really a wonderful feeling after putting in 36 years. And you worked um, non-stop for uh, yes. since you were 19 years old? Yes, I took maybe nine months off with one yes. child and nine months with another child. But other than that, I did work full time. Any others? Well, for me, it's more the freedom of doing what I want when I want. Exactly. Um, 
and not, not having any other uh, commitments that I have to answer for. Okay. Um, so I enjoy that freedom that, that they do as well. So for you, retirement is freedom? Mm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I have, I, I'm having a very different um, reaction to retirement. I still, eat, it's been two years and I still get up at 5.30 in the morning and I will go out in the living room and I watch um, the assistant principal who lives next door to me as he drives past my house and I go, I really miss teaching. <laughs> so Because you have like daily reminders. You know. Yeah, and I, I really, um, I don't know that I was ready to retire, but my wife retired, and we had planned to retire together. Okay. So that was the consideration. So you retired at the same time your wife did? Yes. Okay. So we could be together and then move on from there. Okay. So you enjoy your time with her, I guess? Yes. Very good. When I get to see her. What about you, Frank? Well, like the gentleman here, traveling into Manhattan every day, I guess, for downtown. Retirement was not going into Manhattan every day. I drove a limousine privately, and I lived in Queens, and I lived in Nassau County. So not having to do that every day was, to me, a pleasure, and one of the benefits of my retirement was not having to take that trip to the city. But I do miss it now. It was uh, a great time, very exciting. Yeah. But. Uh, I retired at 72, and uh, I felt it's time enough. That's it. Let's you look it great. Up. I do? You do. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Thank you very much. <laughs> so now, um, I want to ask, uh, what made you retire? I know, Frank, you said you retired at the age of 72. So what, what actually made you retire? Me? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you the story. I got you an still? inheritance. Oh. I got an inheritance. Okay. A large amount of money. And... Uh, I was working for a gentleman, Wall Street guy, very high pressure, and we had a lot of conflicts. I could never leave the job because of the financial responsibilities I had. But when I received this inheritance, I said, that's it, it's time to go. So I was able to live independently financially and uh, gave in my resignation, and that was the end of If I did not receive this inheritance, I probably would have still been working. Because, you know, today the prices are going up, I have a house, I have an apartment, uh, but the inheritance helped a great deal to motivate me to stop working. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but I just wanna ask you again, you know, since, you know, something came up and that prompted you to retire. Correct. Did you plan it? Did you? Well, you know, you always, I planned on retiring 50 years ago. You know, oh. you were always thinking of <laughs> retiring and going out there, living the high life, but, uh, no, I did not. I, uh, this inheritance came unexpectedly, and I said, okay, this is it. But no, I, I, I did not plan. I was con going to continue working. I was able to continue working. There was no uh, limit on how many years I could work the, in the work that I did. So no, this, uh, I, would, I would have still been working today, okay. most probably, yeah. Okay. So you came, and within the space of how many months did you? Oh, almost immediately. Almost immediately. Yeah, I spoke to the man I worked for, a very nice gentleman, high-pressure job working on Wall Street. Uh, I told him the circumstances, and he said, great. And that was the end of it. We had a nice party, and my job is over. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to go back to it, though. <laughs> I miss the city. Yeah, the city can be very, yeah. So what made you retire? Well, I planned it for about a year. Okay. I worked for one more year, and during that year, I took um, some college courses that would raise me to the next level of salary, so I would retire <coughs> one step higher. And my wife knew that she was going to retire, and we decided to go with her business rather than work separately. Okay. So she is a quilter and she opened up an Etsy store online for uh, quilts and blankets and custom made pocketbooks for people and I do all the photography for her catalog. And how is the business? 
the business is very, very busy. Oh, okay. So you're busy. Very, we are both busy. And uh, the initial startup will take about three years to recoup. Okay. So was that part of the plan? What made you... Um, you and your wife decided to... Uh, She's been doing it for 30, 33 years or okay. more. Okay. But she was a special education teacher. Okay. So we did have two um, retirement funds coming in. Okay. So we were independent. We were able to sustain our lifestyle, but we, um, we did in such a way that our cars were paid off, we had no outstanding loans except for the mortgage, and my sons were smart enough to get scholarships to college. So those are the things that you put in place before you decided to retire, so the yes. planning that went into One son had already completely gone through college with no college loans whatsoever. Very good. Is that what made you retire? Mine wasn't by choice at the beginning. It okay. wasn't? It was not. Now, the industry being in financial services, with the economy, the uh, place was downsizing, and uh, there wasn't any room for me at that point. And uh, for the first year or so, it was difficult because I was close to retirement, but I was still a couple of years away. So the planning was there. Uh, the wife is not ready to retire yet. She still hasn't retired. Um, but after being out for a year and trying to find something that I wanted in the field, um, I decided I was happy staying home. Oh, okay. okay. So that was, I don't know if the official retirement is when I really left the place or when I decided I didn't want to go back anymore. And when was that? After one and a half years? About uh, almost a year. Okay. Almost a year of getting up and not having to deal with what was going on out there but still keeping interested. You know, uh, that's when I was, you know, definitely was happy not to be going back in. Oh, okay. Okay, what about you, Mike? Similar story. Got caught up in a consolidation in the industry. And I had been, I guess, increasingly disgruntled with Wall Street over the last decade with the government intervention and other things that have been going on. And I kind of talked to my wife about it and said, I've just had enough. I don't want to go do that anymore. I want to go find something else to do. Oh, okay. So now, since you said you wanted to find something else to do, so what are, what are you doing now? What are the things you're doing well, now? I, uh, I opened a couple of businesses, but they kind of run themselves. Okay. And uh, I got kind of bored, like everyone else seems to be. Mm -hmm. And my sister had mentioned one of these uh, programs that you turned me on to, in Standardized Patient. And um, I don't know why, but I truly enjoy doing it. Okay. So uh, I'm kind of focused on that right now. So you're doing something different from, you know. Very different from very what different. I used to do, yeah. Are you, are you enjoying it? I really enjoy it. I don't know why I enjoy it so much, but I do. <laughs> you know, hidden talent, I guess. I <laughs> so what are the things that you guys are doing now to keep you occupied since well, you're no longer doing... Um, I'm doing the same thing as Mike is with the standard patient. Okay. Um, it's enjoyable that, you know, when you're working with uh, y younger kids uh, that are just trying to start in their profession. And also I find that, you know, the pressure isn't there. Yeah, we're going to work and a couple of times a month uh, or a few times a month, but I don't have to be there. I don't have to be there Monday through Friday. There isn't the pressure on me, but I enjoy what I'm doing. Okay. So that ma that makes it worthwhile. It doesn't feel like a job, yeah. which I don't want anymore. <laughs> well, I still have bills, so I have to work, but I'm fortunate that I do have a pension. Okay. My husband still works. Um, so I knew when I retired that I would have to do something and one of the easiest things to do is to substitute. I changed it up for myself, though. I was always in elementary. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to junior high and high schools, which is totally different. And I'm really enjoying dealing with the, that age group of students as opposed to five, six, seven-year-olds. Um, I do want to get involved in the standardized patient because it just seems like something I would enjoy doing. I don't know why, but <laughs> I'm getting a good feeling about it. But I don't want to be committed nine to five, Monday through Friday. So this sounds good. Substituting is perfect. It's online. You pick the day you want to work, when you want to work. 
and um, so I guess something about retirement is the um, the ability to be able to do whatever you want at whenever you want without having the structure or the pressure of time or you know yeah. going. So I guess I'm, that is that is what I'm getting from what you the flexibility, the, the flexibility. to still live life, meet people, do things, and. Um, how does that uh, relate with you? Well, I have a, a whole a whole other career that I've been working on for a year, and that is to use my teaching ability and my specialty, marine biology, um, in a as an educator at the Long Island Aquarium. So I take school groups around and families and. I give lectures throughout the um, aquarium. I've also done some audiovisual work for them, putting in surround sound stereo for the microphones that the people use all around the aquarium. And uh, it's a way to keep teaching, to keep my marine biology degree in play. And at the same time, doing what you love doing what I love, which is teaching, okay. and is I don't have to correct any tests. <laughs> that is very smart. Margaret, I did forget to tell you about a job they do have. My wife is very happy, is that I become the house husband. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I do the cleaning, the, the, the shopping, and, and uh, just taking care of the normal errands that we used to have to do on the weekends together. And she's, I'm sure she's, she's right. thrilled with it, because she can still do the job that she wants to do and know that the other stuff still has to take it, get, well, get done. Good job. <laughs> Comment on that. How about Fred? Do you have a... I'm still trying to figure out what to do when I grow up. <laughs> 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 the, the big thing about retirement, one, one big thing, when I was working in Manhattan, I worked for a large firm, it was not only a job, but it becomes also your, your social life. Okay. You meet people, you go here, you have uh, company parties and so forth. When I retired, that slowly faded, faded away. away. There were still people you kept in touch with. So now I find myself with a lot of time, 24 hours a day, and I really don't have a hobby. I'm separated from my wife, so this traveling is something that retired people usually do as a couple. I don't do that. Um, one big interest I was telling uh, Jan was the theater. I was in the theater also. I had a, my career really was uh, in the theater, it was not distinguished, but I've been doing community theater, keeps me busy. Okay. But at my age, I'm 77, I am finding it difficult remembering lines, it's a reality. Uh, so I'm doing less and less of that. So I'm, I'm really struggling with my retirement. Okay. I didn't have a plan. These gentlemen had a plan when they retired. I don't have a plan. He's got a second career, he's got a business to go to. Uh, so I'm struggling, to be very, very honest with you. It's a big factor when you retire. Know what's ahead. If you don't know what's ahead, you got 24 hours. That's, that's a good advice. That's a good advice in. for those that are planning. Yep. You know, well, uh, I took a step. So you're saying you can't travel together. I decided last year I wanted to go to Radio City Music Hall. Nobody could go. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it by myself. I bought my ticket. I went into Manhattan. I had lunch by myself. I walked around. And I went to the show. And I enjoyed the show, and I did it alone. Jen, give me a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Another time I went to the movies alone. I'm like, I've never done that before, but I wanted to see a particular movie. It's two in the afternoon, and I went. So, yes, we could do things together. That's great. That's great. Now, let's talk about, um, I know there is this assumption that women, you know, struggle more. You know, with retirement that men. You're not going to ask them, I guess. <laughs> I know, but yeah, I'm going to throw that question at you. Do you feel? I disagree, feel okay. totally. And I actually contact a few friends who are are retired also, and um, only one of them had a, an issue mm -hmm. in the beginning because, like you, she was not planning on retiring. She had another two more years that she was going to work, but something came up where she had to retire. And she said, until she found her self-worth, she felt that her job teaching validated who she was. And she missed that after not teaching. But now 
she has another commitment to her grandchildren and other things and she feels fulfilled. So that was one woman that was a little not taken with the retirement. Another gal is, um, she finds it boring in the winter, you know, to get out and do things. But everybody else is okay with it. So I, I don't know what the premise is that I mean, it's, it's a general assumption because women, you know, the assumption is, you know, most of them, you know, they stay home. So, you know, having retirement is not really a retirement because they still, you know, have to take care of home, like your wife now, she's having a relief because yeah, but I'm you're seeing helping it, her. I'm seeing it differently. I have a lot of friends who were in the teaching profession and they seem to socialize more. Well, you know, they'll get together for their, for their card games or do the shopping. You mean the women? Yeah, for the women, taking care of the grandkids. Where some of my friends who have retired have felt like, you know, some of these guys, they're, they're, they're bored. Some so of them so it should be the opposite. That I think so. They, 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 they guys don't seem to get together that are retired right, during the day true. as much. Um, and, and they feel that they want to go back to work. So if they're either going back and taking part-time jobs or looking for something else to do, uh, where the women I know is once they retire, they're retired. They're, they're happy. They social butterflies. Abs absolutely. <laughs> I, absolutely. I agree. Uh, I think there's another um, aspect of uh, the male-female look at um, retirement, and that is we still, well, I'll, I'll only speak for myself. I still feel as if I should be bringing home a paycheck. I do miss being paid for my knowledge or for my work, and I feel guilty that I'm not bringing in more. So there's a little bit of guilt attached to it. I should have more success in retirement, or I would like to have more success in retirement. And so that you're finding that to be a little bit... Um... I'm... Um, I mean, you have. I'm grabbing for jobs. Okay. Anything. I mean, I worked for six months in retail okay. at Pier One Imports. After, after you retired. After I retired. Okay. Just to you know, the the Christmas help kind of thing, just to have a paycheck coming in, and I needed to feel like I had to be somewhere at a certain time. Okay. So that was part of it was schedule. I wanted to be somewhere. Okay. And part of it was Your I wanted to make money, money as long as I had to be there. Okay. Do you, anyone has any uh, opinion who wants to share? Are you guys hungry? Oh, for I think there's a difference. There's a distinction between women who were stay-at-home moms and career women. Um, yes. I don't know how stay-at-home moms would react to a husband's retirement. I don't have one, anyone to relate to in that, but uh, we share similar wives who don't want to retire. You know, we talked about it, and she just, my wife just needs to work. She needs to have that uh, structure in her life. Um, so, for the time being, you know, I'm the stay-at-home mom, so to speak. <laughs> um, and are you enjoying that? I, 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 oh, it should be a I question. Think, I think we all we don't want to clean, but no, we <laughs> you touched on a topic that I think is, is universal, and that is when you work full-time in whatever industry you're in, you have a circle of friends that you see every day. You communicate with these people all the time. You may socialize with them after work and on the weekends. After you retire, for me, within a six month period, those friendships kind of dissolved. You know, uh, we, we have different interests. Those people are still going to work every day uh, and fighting for their lives in, in that industry. And I'm out and about doing what I want to do. So you tend to lose that circle of friends and that support group, if you want to call it that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you find yourself on your own a lot more than you used to be. And that takes, for me, that's taking some adjusting. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. What about your friend? What was the question? The question about uh, the assumption that women struggle more than men. After, uh, well, from my experiences, uh, I really don't have a, I never really thought about that question. I can only relate to my wife um, her jobs over the years, growing up with the family, were you know, intermittent. She had a part-time job here, had a part-time job there. Um, I, I really don't have an answer to that. 
she seems to be happy doing what she's doing. She seems like her life is more fulfilling than mine right now. Um, I don't know whether it's okay. better or worse. Or, I really have no okay. opinion. I, I guess we've, you know, we've been able to, you, you wanted to say something, Jan? No, I, I mean, I think the men here said, it, I think it's harder on men. On oh, men, I think, yeah. I, I don't know where the 70% the came because it doesn't seem to be yeah. I mean, this is, this is good because now you have, you know, input, you know, from men themselves. I'm sure you guys will, you know, be able to um, maybe, you know, agree or not agree with them that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the opposite. You know, women, mm -hmm. they tend to have more social life after retirement and men, it's like they lose that yes. you know, social, you know, support. I and women are actually closer as a group while they're working and they bring it with them, with them. Um, into retirement. They stay in touch with their peers, with the people they work with, with their girlfriends, with their men friends. But men, after we leave our workplace, I was totally shocked that out of 50 people that I worked with that I cared very much about, um, I probably get three I get phone calls from three people a couple of times a year. So the, the, it was so just what a is work relationship work yes. so that I put more into. So they beyond work relationship when they're still, you know. Well, I, we talk about raising our kids at work, and then, you know, we go to their weddings, and then the, then the children move away, and then the women connect with what the theater, books, lunches, Walking, take just going and walking. Um, I think it's the nature of it's nature. men and women yeah, are different yeah, in that area. Yeah, yeah. So, are there any retirement problems that you would like to, you know, share to discuss? Well, yeah, let me just mention one thing. I think I'm the senior over here. These will be my. <laughs> yes, Frank, you are. <laughs> We're the young ones. Right. They're the young ones. I'm, I'm 77. I'll be 78 in a couple of months. But Again, the you other, look the great. You look great. Thank you. The the other thing is your health. Now, in my case, not so much in their case, but in my case, most of my contemporaries are my age, older, there's a big factor. Hey, you want to get together Thursday? No, I got, a, I got something here. I, got, you know, I have to go to my doctor. <laughs> Health factor is very, very significant in retirement, and that, that has to do with uh, my the age, age range. Oh, okay. Correct, yeah. So I fortunately myself, I, I'm in pretty good shape, but a lot of my friends are not. And so you call them up. You want to go here, you want to do this or that, and more often than not, you'll hear, no, I'm not feeling well, I have a doctor's appointment. That's a fact. Well, maybe after this, you take her just normal. <laughs> <laughs> you take her normal, you know? <laughs> She's married, I'm still married. That's okay. That's friends. like an aside, oh. guy, friends. <laughs> um, I find time management my problem. I'm not very good with it. I don't know how to prioritize. And when you're used to getting up and going somewhere and being there at 8.30 or whatever every day and coming home and doing your shopping and you had a plan. I don't have a plan. I so kind of, I like not having a plan, but I find myself, before I know it, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm on the computer or making phone calls and I, I just, I'm not saying it's bad, but I need to get better at time management. That's that's good. Most of the time, you know, you don't have a place to go in the morning, and you know, you tend to. It's true. I mean, I can, even though I'm not retired yet, but you know, I can, I can, you know, identify with that. It's also expectations of what we thought retirement was. You know, when I was younger, it's, okay, I'm going to retire, so I'm going to be traveling and playing golf every day and doing this. Well, well, in my case, my wife is still working, but it's still a matter of no matter how much you plan financially, money is still an issue. Absolutely. You know, not that you might be not struggling to work, mm -hmm. but you know, you might not be able to join the country club or, or go on to the to the yacht club or, or, or do the traveling for 40 weeks a year out of the 50, 52. Um, so while you can still enjoy that stuff and still have the time to do it, unless you're so busy, um, <laughs> to, to do it, um, that you have to curtail a little bit, okay. you know, and the unexpected events that you didn't foresee. You know, you might have planned on retiring at a certain time or did retire for whatever reasons you want to be retired. 
there's certain life events. I mean, in this area, we had the storms that came up financially. That might have hit some people that we didn't expect on. Mm -hmm. So that savings that we had, you know, mm -hmm. maybe is cut down a little bit. Yeah. Um, in certain instances, you know, you might have to help out family members that things happen in their lifetime that you didn't expect. So, you know, planning is great, expectations is great, but, you know, reality is always going to be different. And if you have a mindset to um, react to that, you're going to be better off. Okay. So, you know, psychologically, you're well prepared, you know, to go on the trip. Well, hopefully you try to be well prepared for it. Okay. okay. There's, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Oh, there's an old expression, man plans and God laughs. <laughs> That's true. I'm taking care of um, my 90-year-old mother, and we're moving her into an assisted living facility now, and um, it's lovely, but I've taken over her entire life. So I'm uh, taking care of her money, paying her bills, doing everything. And so I structure my life three times a week or so, working from 9 o'clock until 11 in the morning at a table, fulfilling my obligations to her to keep her safe and some, you know, semi-independent. Okay. Is but that I, a role that you found yourself taking because you're retired and you're the only one in the family that is available to take care of her or is it just something that... Uh, it you know? sort of just happened because okay. I'm the closest brother, okay. I'm the closest son so. to her, but um, it would, you know, it would, it would all fall in my lap anyway. Anyway, okay. Do you have any... Um, I want to talk about a big problem that they may not want to talk about, and that is weight gain. Weight <laughs> <laughs> gain? I've gained 20 pounds since I retired. Wow. And, you know, I, I guess it, I'm certainly cooking a lot at home because I have the time, but uh, I don't know if it's because I don't have to be in front of people every day and I'm not watching my weight. I don't know if anyone else is experiencing something similar, yep. but yep. the weight gain after retirement was a real shocker. Mm -hmm. wow. That's, that's, that's why we need really someone to come so we can get active again. <laughs> my wife and I actually block time to go to the gym because I, I am, I've gained 50 pounds in the last three years. You know, part of it is just growing older, but I don't want to carry that around, and it's all in one spot, <laughs> you know. So that's, that's a major problem, I <coughs> guess, a, because it is of a major problem. maybe lack of activity. And it's that, and it's this, yeah. I, I developed this attitude that since I can do what I want when I want, I can eat what I want well. when I want, and drink what I want when I want, well. and well. I'm paying the price. <laughs> As you can tell, I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. A lot of times when you're on the job, you know, you might not have time to get so, lunch and if you skip lunch but you're busy and you're yeah, working right, right through it it's okay you're home now it's you know you get up it's breakfast middle of the day whether it's 12 1 2 it's, it's lunch. lunch and then when the, the wife comes home and the husband or somebody else it's dinner time you can eat yeah, yeah. and wow. you snack when you have a movie and there you go <laughs> yeah. a lot of us do find ourselves not busy enough to um, avoid the, the meals or the snacks actually and some people build their schedule around having breakfast with their spouse, having lunch with their spouse, and dinner with their spouse, and we're more likely to cook more for each of those meals than we would be if we were running out yeah, the door, yeah. you know, or only had a half an hour for a lunch hour at school I mean, or whatever. That, what is this, um Point. You know, I never thought about it. As, you know, thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, you know? thanks for reminding. Yeah, me. I, I never thought about it. I mean, you think about you, a lot of problems that people could have. You know, once they retire, but that is something that you won't never. I and mean, the it, older you get, the harder it is to lose the weight. But you do have the time to socialize, to eat, to cook, to enjoy your meals, even if you're cooking them or going out. So you have to offset it with yeah. Exercise. So I guess one other problem more serious than putting on weight and this is this is the dark side of my life uh, a friend of mine once told me he said you know if you're drinking too much after a while and if you're alone too much that bottle of alcohol is going to be your best friend I find not only in my cab not an alcoholic but I do drink
drink more than I ever drank. I eat more than I ever, but the, the drinking is, could be uh, eventually developed into a major problem. It's not a major problem right now, but I'm discovering myself drinking earlier and earlier. You know, cocktail hour used to be 6 o'clock or whatever. Now it's 3 in the afternoon. It's a serious problem. And I don't know if anybody else, I'm sure there are other people experiencing that problem, but I'm confronting that right now as a retiree. When I was working, of course, you're working, you're busy uh, from 6 in the morning to 10 at night, and you, you don't have that time uh, and that opportunity to do the drinking. But when you retire, uh, again, I'm sure there are people who don't have anything to drink, but retirement is going to bring on that need to keep busy and to have a, another Some friend busy. around. Yeah. 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 So how are you dealing with that? I mean, it's a good thing that you have the consciousness that this is becoming a problem. It, it, it's it's um, it's not a, it's a problem. It's a problem, but it's not a, a serious a serious problem. problem. I mean, that's so that may be self-serving mm -hmm. to say that, mm -hmm. but that's the way I look at it. The drinking I drink every day. Um, I wake up in the morning fine. I have no headaches. I'm not hungover, but I find myself drinking more since I retired. Okay. And um, I mean, for our viewers, any of this problem or any situation that you want to bring to us, bring to our attention, you're more than welcome. You can write us, you know, by email, you can call us or send us, you know, information on uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm sure you're enjoying, you know, their, um, you know, their stories, you know, which I'm sure that um, you also um, may want to, um, you know, identify with or if you agree with it or you're not, you know, you're welcome to send us your, uh, your opinion. Now, the other question that I want to ask, you know, this is a very general uh, assumption that the moment, you know, you retire, you grow old. That once you retire, you grow old. Is, is that, is that... Um, I think that's an individual uh, okay. option. There. Okay. Um, some, some people, they may not want to retire. They say, no, I don't want to retire because I don't want to get into a situation where everything is just going to slide down. And, uh, I can't, for myself, I retired and want to do things that I didn't have time to do, so it's like a new life. It's new kind of life. rejuvenated that I can okay. do certain things. Okay. But everybody's mindset might be different. That's true. And if they get depressed, then they could become complacent and old, you know, feeling old and mm -hmm. not, the self, not have the same self-worth that they had prior. Um, so I think it could go either way. Most of the people I know who are retired are doing things that they've always wanted to do and now can do it. So it's so it's, it's a, a new life. New life. So it depends transition look, to a new life. It depends if you look at retirement as the end game or the beginning of a new one. That's true. I think you know most of us when we started out working as teenagers wanted to retire. <laughs> you know, it, it was always like something that you did. Yes. You know, with our parents uh, out there, uh, unfortunately, they worked, they retired, and they passed away right after that. Um, we now have always, in our generation, have kind of looked forward to life, and that begins uh, mm -hmm. at retirement. Yeah, yeah. A lot of my teacher friends, when they come back to the school, when I was still teaching, people who had retired a year, two years ago, would come back either as substitutes like Jan does or just to visit friends and say hello to everyone. And we would always, we would look at them and go, oh my God, you look marvelous. And they said it's because we dropped all the pressure. We, the, the principal and the assistant principal and the director of the department are not looking at us or breathing down our necks, we're not under any pressure, and you and that's, actually that's start what, um, to said look initially about, you know, younger. freedom from pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I think I definitely felt, I definitely felt my mental capacities deteriorate after the first six months that I was home. Um, I didn't have anything to challenge my mind, and, and I guess it was, you know, the environment that I came from it's very hectic, very stressful, yeah. and you're constantly equating things. Um, and not having that, it will, you know, I, you could read a book, but that's not the same sort of a challenge, yeah. right? Yeah. Not problem solving. Not problem solving. And so I did, I did feel that, uh, and it's something that um, I've tried to, I've tried to combat. 
So I, I, I guess they hadn't felt the same thing, but I definitely felt. Uh, the, the well, I, I was af that. afraid of losing that, and I found with you know technology today, I, I get into playing word games with friends who you know I might not see, might not talk to, but you know you you, you play the, the Scrabble games o over the, the internet. You look for the newspaper that has the the math problems in there or the, the uh, puzzle problems in there. Um, I've also, even though I am retired for a number of years now, totally have no pressure uh, for the financial world. But I'm looking at the financial programs and stuff and trying to read up as much, if not more, than I did before. So maybe what Mike was referring to, maybe if I get you right, you know, problem solving in maybe real life situation, having, you know, a problem and then the task of dealing with that, mm -hmm. you know, pressure or maybe that right. problem. And, and, you know, I, I guess I was looking to the businesses to keep me busy. But unfortunately, I, cho I chose a couple that I don't really have to actively manage. <laughs> so, um, so I don't have that right now. And that's something else I, I guess I'm getting from the standardized patient is memorizing the, the different scripts and, and paying attention to being able to critique the, the students as they, they do that, the physical exams. Is that exams. helping you too? It helps me a little bit, yeah. It helps me uh, stay involved. Yeah, so I'm enjoying that. When I go into a classroom now and substitute, I find it very, very enjoyable. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should do this more. And then I'm like, well, no, because then I wouldn't enjoy it as much. But I do get that stimulation that is lacking because you're not doing something every day. Um, but you have to find something that replaces what you did and gives you that yeah. fulfillment. That's and true. Mine happens to still be in education. I'm still looking for something different. I just haven't found it yet, you know. But I, I'm content with what I'm doing. But I'm still looking. For something. I, I guess the challenge is, you know, you you're not doing something, but you're trying to find a replacement, you know, to fill that void so that you don't have a deterioration in, in the area. Of I didn't feel when I retired. I didn't feel old. You know, it, when we were kids, retirement was you're you're an old man, and you know you're out the pasture. Uh, I always think I'm 16, but it was brought to my attention that I have a granddaughter who's 17. That's <laughs> that's when I felt old. Whoa! What did she say? Did she say something that made you old? No, my son. I said, "How old is Nadine?" He says, "17." I said, "Oh my God! How is it possible? I'm only 16." Well, you're only 16. <laughs> One of the things that. Uh, I wanted to, to say to people who are out there who are retired is um, volunteer. Mm -hmm. Find something that you used to be interested in or that you went to college for. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time what you went to college for is not what you wound up doing as a, as a money-making life decision. So things that you were uh, majoring in in college, the acting for Frank, and um, you would be perfect to work with um, a, a repertoire, a repertory company on Long Island. You I've don't been have doing to, that. Yeah, good. I've been doing that. Yeah. You know, well, like you said before, or working with with younger children, yeah. teaching them acting yeah. for after school programs for BOCES or whoever, some of the local school districts. I worked at the museums in Stony Brook as a staff photographer 25 years ago, and there are people who you work there. You work for them or you volunteer? No, I, I actually worked for them okay. 25 years 25 ago. 25 years ago. And, and you still, because you, you still, you're still with them as a volunteer right As there. a volunteer, okay. you can go in to certain places that you know, okay. and you can become something called a docent, mm -hmm. someone who leads people around on tours, talks to school children, does, you know, whatever, and you don't have to have majored in it or all you have to do is is like the place. Choose a museum, choose an aquarium, choose a program where you can contribute and you will be much happier. I mean in I'm your glad retirement. you brought that up because we're gonna talk about that. You know, what advice do you have for people out there? You know, in terms of what can they do to occupy their times? 
I mean, you've been, you know, retired for quite a while, four years, two years, you know, seven years. You definitely would have something that you want to share with, you know, our viewers, what they can do, or even, you know, among ourselves, you know, what can one do to fill the void, you know, that, um, you know. A friend of mine started working at a soup kitchen. And, um, as a volunteer? As or? a volunteer. Okay. And she got involved with talking to her local community members on donating uh, cakes for breakfast or for lunch. And so that gives her, you know, a little idea on what planning, where to go, asking for donations for the soup kitchen. She loves it. Another friend started doing a guide dog foundation. Um, another friend is doing a bullying program. So there are a lot of different non-paying ways to occupy your time out there that, you know, and you read it in the paper. Sometimes they'll even come up with, uh, these are the uh, areas where we need volunteers. Yeah. I, think, I think about a week after I retired, when I was really retired, I volunteered for Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be helping out older people who need free food. So I would go to uh, St. Francis Hospital, pick up the food. I was doing that, I had about five clients I would be delivering food to. Supposedly, you know, people on uh, fixed incomes, older people. I was doing that for a while, and then one day one of the clients said to me, Frank, don't come by next week, I'm going to be in Palm Beach. <laughs> so I said, okay, <laughs> that's the end of my volunteer. I did it about two months. No, what, what actually made you stop doing that? Because she said she was going to Palm Beach for, for vacation or, or, or The price of gas going? was going up. I, they, you know, this was totally volunteering, and uh, I decided, oh, okay. you know, it, it just, I, I lost interest. I can't say specifically why. Okay. Anyway, that had something to do with it. These, a lot of these people don't need free food. Oh, okay. They don't. I know people now who are getting it. They don't need it. However, I did it because it sounded like something to do in, in retirement, volunteering, giving up myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good cause, but, you know, how do you get into retirement, or how do you, where do you get this information if it's something that you're interested in? A lot on, online, just research. A lot of research goes in with the computer and okay. finding. You know, and for the benefit of our viewers, you know, for those that are interested, what do you do? Where do you go? I mean, how do you get to, into Look, all these programs that are out there? Listen to people. Okay. We, I, we just sat here and we heard, I don't know, five, six, seven different things. How I, we got, uh, at least I got involved in the thing in Stonybrook, is a friend's daughter who was uh, just graduating from uh, med school, okay. the first couple of years in college. She told her mother about a program that she had down in George Washington, and she knew other hospitals did it. All of a sudden, I saw it advertised in the paper. Mm -hmm. All right. I ne probably would have skipped over the advertisement, but I was in a conversation with it before. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that wait a minute, that's what so-and-so was talking about. Let me go in and look into it. Okay. So it's just, a lot of it is word of mouth, looking at it online, reading it in the newspaper. I think everybody probably who, who's had a career, whether on Wall Street and education, you know, they have the moxie, the intelligence to plan ahead question here is the reality. Once you do the retirement, all those wonderful plans, I'm going to take a cruise, I'm going to play golf, I'm going to do it. Uh, reality sets in after a while. You know, we, the reality is we start gaining weight, we drink too much, whatever it may be. But I think prior to that, I think everyone has some general idea of what they're going to do. You don't just go into retirement in a total void. But you know, it, it's something you have to experience. All of a sudden, 24 hours a day, I'm free, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. It's a challenge. It, it sounds great to a lot of people who are still working, but it's a challenge. If you have something to go to, teaching or your case. Well, whatever have, hobby you may have that you think you're going to focus on, it's not going to take up all of yeah. your time. Yeah. 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 And you'll be staring at the walls. Yeah. Or a place to you visit. Right. I think any, anyone who has already done some traveling around Long Island or New York or whatever, there are a million places that we have all been that need, need help doing whatever it is. Um, and also they have younger people that they've hired who we could mentor if it was a volunteer basis or an, um, for a certain period of time 
would a financial institution be willing to put you in as trainers for a bank? You know, I find a lot of people that train other people are sought after because they have the experience. So that's, that's another yes. way to go, is to contact colleges that are putting out the people who would have been working for you. Can you help them gain experience by utilizing your experience? That's, that's true. And, that, and um, you know, I, I want to ask this question. I know um, some time ago I was reading through the newspaper and there was this survey that um, concluded that about 70% of, of people that retired wanted to go back, you know, you know, to work. Does that apply to you in any way? Do you miss going to work? Do you want to go back to work? I mean, what would be the reason that we want someone after you have retired now wants to go back, you know, to find something to do apart from, um, you know, hobby, apart from, um, you know, um, freedom that you talk about. What would make someone, you know, you've retired, officially retired, but now you want to go back? You well, know? there's, there's, you want that paycheck. It's nice to get a paycheck. You feel like you've done so a you, job so and you get a paycheck. It's not a lot of money or whatever it is, but you can utilize that for traveling. I happen to have two children that live far away, so we have to travel. That costs money. But because I go to a little extra job, that helps to pay for it. Um, and you do want to be with other people and engage in conversation and use your mind again. And contact with other people opens up the doors to many different things. That if you're just at home, you know, it's just you and your husband, and it's not the same interaction as when you're out there talking with several people. Um, working, and working gives you a structure to get up, and even coming here today, mm -hmm. I had a plan. Get up, have my coffee, get my hair done. Women have a lot to do. And, um, you know, get in the car and drive. I don't mind driving. and. Have a commitment. Not so every day, though. Not every day. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of us who had careers um, you, you become you identify with that career, and you have a self, sense of self worth uh, that's okay. derived from that career. And then when that's taken away, whether voluntarily or not, uh, it leaves a void, and you have to kind of reinstate that sense of self worth. And regardless of what you do whether you're volunteering or whether you go back to work for the paycheck, which it is true. No matter how much money you think you have for retirement, it's never enough. Okay. Um, and I, I think that's what I'm kind of looking to do is to fill that void where, you know, I used to feel that I was important, that I was contributing, and, you know, I need, I need to have that in my life. Okay, you said something about even if you discover a hobby, you know, it's still not going to... No. Take the place of. If you want to golf, you can't golf in the winter. That's true. Right? If you like to ski, you can't ski in the summer. Uh, even if you do both, you can't do it all the time. All the time. So. Because a lot of people, they have this assumption that once you retire, you just go and do what you like. You find a new hobby and you do it and all that. But you know the reality, Plan. according to Frank, is is is, is you know. Is if, if, if I had the option, I would go back to work. Okay. If, if I had the, uh, the the chance to work in the theater, of course that would be my first choice. I, that was my life. That's what I enjoyed most. That was that was my passion. That was my hobby. That's not too practical in terms of bringing in a paycheck. And again, um, I did a lot of extra work in the movies. I did commercials and worked in community theater, some of stock. But at my age, and I, I suddenly realized that there are uh, limits for what I can do now. But if someone called me up tomorrow for a job driving, that was my other career, being a private chauffeur, if I could set the hours from, let's say, 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock, I would mm. take that job. <laughs> but other than that, I would probably last about a week and say, let me get back to retirement. <laughs> so you can move in and out if yeah, you have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. 
So now for our viewers at home, what would you suggest, you know, as a successful, I mean, how to have a successful um, retirement? What would I think you have to know what your financial situation is and plan ahead for that because, as you said, as much money as you may think you have, you, there's always a need and something comes up. You never know with storms, repairs, um, children that move far, far away. <laughs> Um, so you have to have that in place. So that is, that is very important, very financial important. consideration. Yes, it took me four years to figure out for sure if I was going to have something, an income that would work. Then you have to say, well, what am I going to do? I knew I would go back and do substituting. I knew that I wasn't just going to sit home. A lot of people say, never again, I'm not doing it. <laughs> but it's worked for me. So at least I have a little paycheck coming in or you know, as many days as I want to work. But you're still searching for something, but that's good. Because you know, what you did is what you did, but there's new things out yeah, there to yeah. think about. And coming here, it's just different. <laughs> Ma meeting nice people. Thank you. And yeah. And you gotta be on TV. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question, what makes a successful retirement? I mean, what's Suggestions for successful retirement. Well, a good health, number one. That's oh, of course. Yeah. Top, top priority. Having good health. Having a partner, a spouse, or a very close, close relationship with someone that you can travel with. A lot of people spend their a uh, good part of their retirement going on cruises or going to Florida or whatever. So that means uh, before you retire, you will have to find a partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's an oh yeah. That's it. You're right. You're right. And the other thing, of course, is having some financial uh, security, some couple of bucks there that you can do with and travel and, and so forth, yeah. not having to worry about uh, going out and getting a second job and yeah. starting a career over again. I mean, financial, you know, money-wise, it's relative because, you know, you may have a million and, you know. Spend a million. Spend yeah, that's million. why I would recommend yes. that you try, yeah. if you're contemplating retirement, Mm -hmm. Try to live for two months straight on what will be your future income. That's a good. Uh, and see if you can do it. And, and it, if you plan to stay on Long Island, it's very expensive mm -hmm. to live here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, you're not even including the one-time events that that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. whether it be a significant storm or a health issue. Yeah. Uh, so try try it for a couple of months and see how well you do. Uh, you, if you feel very restricted, yeah. a lot of you're not going to enjoy retirement. If you have no money to do anything. Yeah except just survive, well, that's no good either. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's something that you really ought to experience, is living on that kind of a budget. A lot of my friends have moved south um, because of the difference in taxes alone between Long Island and the Carolinas, Florida, Virginia, wherever it is. Um, also, if you can't take the snow, you know, you get to a point where oh my god, it's the fifth storm, you know, where are my boots and the shovel, and you can't do it anymore, you know, but um, the earlier, for the, for people who are younger, the earlier you start putting away money and getting a very good lawyer for estate planning and a uh, very good accountant who can advise you on your future, the money is priority number one. Um, I really think um, happiness, I, I, I haven't met anyone who had money who wasn't happy. <laughs> if you have enough money, you're happy. You're happy, that's true. Well, it takes away some of the burdens that are out there. Yeah. And the pressure. And the pressure. Everyone seems to be saying that you, you, the earlier you have a plan, and work the plan, you know, it, it's going to be. There's always going to be things that's coming up that you didn't foresee. I mean, you know, the retirement that we foresaw in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s is not the retirement that we're seeing now. No. All right? Whether some of it, it's even better, some of it is harder, some of it is, is just different than strange. So, you know, just like when you were in work, whatever work you had, and teachers know probably better than most, that you've got to get a plan what you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly, uh, yearly time, right? and constantly be willing to change it. 
Thank you so much for this um, various, um, you know, various contribution. I'm sure Thank we'll you. be well fed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Senior Care on TV today. I would like to use this opportunity to thank our viewers and also our panels. Thank you, Mike, for coming. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, Marshall, Marshall Jan, um, Frank. Frank. It's been a pleasure you know, having you, you. on uh, Senior Care on TV. And we hope to hear from you. If you have any question, you have any contribution that you'd like to share with us, please feel welcome. You can reach us on our um, phone number that is going to be on the screen. You can also uh, email us or you know uh, see us on Facebook. Thank you.